Yes, guys. So now we get into a disclosure related standard which deals with segment reporting. It was called by the name segment reporting under IGAP as per AS 17. Now, this is a part of India's 108 which deals with something called as operating segments. The name given is operating segments. I'll tell you what is the difference. I'll tell you why it has become very important. Now, I'll put it like this. Guys, whenever I talk about operating segments, the intention of the standard is basically to make sure that the user of financial statements can see through the eyes of the management, can see through the eyes of the management on how the management sees the enterprise. Management does not simply present a PNL or a balance sheet for making decision making process. They have broken down the operating segments. They have identified small, small components of the enterprise based on which they take a decision based on which they basically perform the activity of decision making. Now, let's say I am into a garment industry. Garment industry is a very fancy industry, right? Right. Let's say my garment industry is into making garments for both men as well as women. The enterprise tries to look at what is the revenue which they collect from men garment as well as the women garment. What is the expenditure related to men garment and what is the expenditure related to women garment? What is the profitability they derive from men garment and what is the profitability they derive from women garment? This way of presentation will, will entitle the management to take a call on where should they allocate the further resources to. If the women garment is giving me a substantial high higher profit, then the enterprise resources will also be diverted towards the women garment industry only. Clear? So men garment industry will not be allocated enough funds or any further funds. Now this decision making process cannot be derived only if I create one single p &L. Because in that single p &L, I will only be able to understand whether the enterprise as a whole is deriving a profit or a loss. How will I know whether women garment is doing better or men garment is doing better? How will I know whether the South industry or the North, in, North in, uh, South India or North India or Central India or West India or East India is giving me a better sales? How do I know whether the state of Tamil Nadu or whether the state of Karnataka, whether the state of Madhya Pradesh or Uttar Pradesh or Delhi or Rajasthan or Haryana is giving me a better benefit? So that means an enterprise has to break down the entire p &L into bits and pieces. How will they break down? If I was the manager of the enterprise and if I was supposed to take a decision financially, then I will request them to give me data like this. State wise, area wise, give me data of male garments and female garments based on which I will take a call. Based on which I will decide which one is more, more important for me or where the resources has to be allocated. How do I assess the performance of each particular pattern? So all these decisions are being derived by breaking down the PNL into small parts. This breaking down of PNL into small parts to assess the performance and to allocate resources is basically called as operating segment. Each that small small piece is called as operating segment. These operating segments have to be reported as a part of your financial statements as per India's 108. What does this do? This will give a better clarity to the user and can help the user to see through the eyes of the management. How the management sees data to make, to make decision making process, to make certain decisions. So even the user will be entitled to make those decisions where user will also be entitled to see or judge the decisions of the management based on this information. This is the objective of India's 108. Clear? It was also the similar objective under AS-17. But we have particularly one strong problem in India's 108 or even under AS-17. If I break down in that way and if I try to basically give you per, based on each component or based on each state on geographical location, if I break down and if I give you two basic problems I get. Number one. Competitor will know where I'm making major profit. Competitor will kill my competitive advantage by entering into that industry, which is actually creating so much of profit to me. Number one problem from the competitor. Number two problem I have from the customer. 
if the customer will access my information and he will see that this particular component which he is buying he, the company has a profit of almost 35 percent next time he will say sir i have seen your financial statements you are making a profit of 35 percent which is more than normal so why don't you cut down by 10 percent so that you give the product at a much cheaper price to me so customer will get a bargaining power because of these operating segments similarly a competitor will kill my competitive advantage if such sensitive data is being exposed to them so understandably operating segments to be reported is always a sense of uh, discomfort to the management because the management does not want to expose such kind of information clear because this is highly sensitive data so that is one big problem of operating segments now what does india's 108 say how is it significantly different from a17 a17 used to classify the segments into two types called as business segments and geographical segments while your business segments are categorized or classified based on the nature of products and services based on the class of customers based on the production process based on the distribution channel geographical segments are based on the proximity of operation based on the uh, regulating statutes based on the foreign currency risk based on these i will identify geographical segments now that way a17 gave a guidance on how to identify segments as well india's 108 said forget you don't have this concept of business segments or geographical segments anymore because by identifying geographical segments and business segments you are again putting extra pressure on the management to identify segments in a particular manner only but in days 108 what is the objective to make the user see through the eyes of the management so management is anyways preparing a report present the same report sir management is not dividing it based on area or based on the business no problem in the in days 108 we don't have the concept of business segments and geographical segments it is exactly the same segments which the management sees or which the management presents internally for the purpose of decision making so therefore there is no concept of business segments and geographical segments resulting from india's 108 clear so let's see a 17 has given us a classification of business segments and geographical segments where they identify business segments based on nature of products production process class of customers distribution channels which are significantly distinct risk and rewards same way even they used to identify geographical segments based on area of operation regulating environment environment and currency risk which are significantly distinct from each other in risk and rewards india's 108 has eliminated this process they made things simpler saying that you present however the management is seeing the information clear according to india's 108 a comp a, 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 an operating segment is a component of an enterprise which involves in business activities of deriving revenue and incurring expenses which the codm uses the information to allocate resources and assess performance codm means chief operating decision maker in simple sense management discrete financial information of that particular component is available discrete financial information in separate financial information for that particular segment is available a segment is a component of an enterprise which involves in business activities of deriving revenue and incurring expenses and the codm uses the information to allocate resources and assess the performance and where separate or a discrete financial information is available there are four step process which i have to apply in reporting operating segments what is this four step process first step identify the codm who is your chief operating decision maker that is the first thing number two identify operating segments number three determine what is my reportable segments number four disclosures necessary this part of disclosures i'll briefly explain towards the end but as such disclosures are not very important as a part of the standard for your exam perspective only from your exam perspective i'm saying the disclosures are not the most important ones but the first three steps will elaborately understand how do i identify a codm 
who is this person CODM? Chief Operating Decision Maker, who is he? Number two, what are the operating segments in an enterprise? Number three, out of these operating segments, what should be reported? Number four, what are the disclosures necessary? Clear? So this is the part which I have to understand as a part of India's 108. First one, who is this CODM? He is a chief operating decision maker. I have never found in an enterprise a title of CODM at all. Have you seen? I know CEO, I know CFO, I know managing director, I know chairman, I know company secretary. These designations I know. I have never heard about this person called as chief operating decision maker. Therefore, CODM is not a title. It is not a title given to a person. It is the function which the person does. What function he does? A chief operating decision maker ha happens to perform the function of assessing the performance and allocation of resources. He will assess the performance on which segment is doing better, which segment is doing badly and he will allocate resources accordingly. If these functions are handled out by a person, that person is called as chief operating decision maker. Generally, the managing director, CEO, CFO, COO, all these people should be generally called as CODM because they perform the function of assessing the performance and allocating resources. Here, then step two, how do I identify operating segments? Operating segments should be identified based on the reports accessed by CODM in assessing the performance and allocating resources. What reports he sees in making decisions regarding assessing assessment of performance and allocation of resources. He generally comes across an MIS, a Management Information System Reports. These are generated periodically. Some organization they do it on monthly basis, some organization do it on quarterly basis. These are provided to your internal management which will enable the management to make decisions regarding allocation of resources and assessment of performance. So based on this MIS, based on this internally generated information, based on this internally circulated information, I will identify operating segments. So that concept of AS17 rigidly defining business segments and geographical segments is gone. You will only identify segments based on the periodical reports which are provided to the CODM where, based on which he makes decisions regarding allocation of resources and assessment of performance. Clear? So it became simple here. Then comes into the third, the most important concept of reportable segments. Out of the segments identified in step two, all operating segments which I have identified in step two, I will only report a few segments. Now your reporting of only a few segments has an underlying concept of materiality. He says the management has 365 days time and he will see every information. User does not have so much time on your enterprise. So the user wants to see only material information. So out of all the operating segments which are reported to the CODM on a periodic basis, I want to identify only a few segments which are material enough so that the user will get to access that material information only. Immaterial information can be ignored. Now, how do I apply materiality? How do I know that a particular segment is material? How do I know whether a particular segment should be reported or not? To identify this materiality, there are three materiality tests that he has given under India's 108. What are those three uh, step uh, tests which he has given? Revenue test, result test, asset test. Revenue test, where the segment revenue is at least 10% of total segment revenue. It is not greater than guys, greater than equal to is more appropriate. Segment revenue is at least 10% of total segment revenue. Segment assets of a particular segment are at least 10% of the total segment assets. Thirdly, your result test, where segment result, result is nothing but net profit or net loss, is at least 10% of, higher of all the segments and profits put in total, or the total of all segments and losses, considered as an absolute figure. 
I'll add all segments and profits. I'll add all segments and losses. Out of these two totals, whichever is higher, considering them as absolute number. Because you'll say, sir, loss means minus no. Anyways, profit will be higher. No. Consider them as absolute numbers and compare these two figures. Whichever is higher, if your segment result is at least 10% of that particular 10%, uh, if your segment result is at least 10% of the higher of the total of segment results and profits and total of segment results and losses, then it shall be considered as a reportable segment. Question comes up, should a segment to be considered as reportable satisfy all three tests or can it satisfy any of these three tests? Answer is any of these three tests. That means a segment which satisfies a revenue test is sufficient to be called as a reportable segment even if it does not satisfy the asset test and the result test. Same way it applies even to other tests as well. Therefore, I can say that if a segment satisfies any of the three materiality tests, revenue test, result test and asset test, then you can consider these segments as reportable segments. What are these three tests and how do we identify these three tests? Let's see. I'm talking about materiality tests. To determine reportable segments. I'll determine reportable segments out of all the operating segments identified in step two based on three materiality tests. What are the three materiality tests that he'll apply? The first test that he's going to apply is called as revenue test. What is your revenue test? Revenue test means if my segment revenue of a particular segment is at least greater than or equal to 10% of total sum of all segment revenues, sum of all segment revenues, then I can consider it as a reportable segment. Number two, asset test. Under asset test, he says, if a segment has an operating assets, segment asset is at least greater than or equal to 10% of total segment assets. Total segment assets. Then you can consider them as reportable segments. Thirdly, result test. Under result test, he says, if your segment result, result is nothing but profit or loss. If your segment result, profit or loss of the segment is at least 10% of higher of Point number one, sum of all segments and profits, sum of all segments and profits or sum of all segments and losses. Loss, don't take it as negative figure, should be considered as absolute amounts then it satisfies result test all these three tests result test asset test and revenue test are separated by or that means if a segment satisfies any of these three tests then it can be considered as a reportable segment as per india's 108 so Three materiality tests which I have given, 
revenue test, asset test, result test. So if a segment satisfy segments identified as operating segments in step two, if they satisfy any of these three tests, then they should be considered as material segments, which should be reported under India's 108. Because reporting too many segments will be waste of time. That's why he's asking us to identify what are reportable segments. Clear? What is segment revenue? It is a segment revenue. Segment revenue is a directly attributable revenue or reasonably allocated revenue to a segment. It includes inter-segment revenue. What is inter-segment revenue? That means if one segment is billing to the other segment or sending goods to the other segment, that is called as inter-segment transaction. In an inter-segment transaction, if the segment which is transferring goods is charging a certain price from the other segment, it should be called as inter-segment revenue. Clear? So it is a directly attributable or reasonably allocated revenue to a segment, including inter-segment revenue and excluding extraordinary items should be considered as segment revenue. What is a segment result? Segment revenue minus segment expenses is segment result. That is nothing but profit or loss. What is a segment expense? Same thing as segment revenue. It is directly or reason, directly attributable or reasonably allocable revenue expenses to the segment, including inter-segment expenses, including inter-segment expenses, inter-segment revenue included in segment revenue, inter-segment expenses included in segment expenses. It excludes extraordinary items and also excludes tax expense. What is a segment asset? Operating assets that are directly attributable to the segments, but they exclude deferred tax asset. Tax expense excluded from segment expense, deferred tax asset excluded from your segment assets. Clear? This is the concept of revenues, segment revenues, segment assets, segment expenses, and finally segment result. Clear? So based on these definitions, you can apply these three materiality tests on the segments identified in step two based on the management information and you identify which segment is material and report that segment under India's 108. Clear? However, a few segments which do not satisfy the materiality test. It neither satisfied revenue test, neither satisfied result test, nor satisfied asset test but can still be considered as reportable under two situations. Number one, at the discretion of the management. Number two, a segment which was identified as reportable segment in last year as a, man as a result of management discretion. Both are somewhere related to management discretion, I'll tell you. A management believes that this particular segment is of great importance. It is going to be of great importance in the coming future. But today, that segment is very small. So as said, that segment did not meet the criteria of materiality test of result test, asset test, or asset test or revenue test. But management is believing that this segment is of great importance and tomorrow in future, this will be the primarily one of the big segments. Then at the discretion of the management, the management can identify a segment as reportable even if it does not satisfy any of the materiality test. Remember, if a segment was identified as reportable due to discretion of the management in last year, in the previous year, the management by their discretion has selected a particular segment to be a reportable segment. Even in the current year, it will continue to be a reportable segment even if the management does not have the same intention about that segment in the current year. Last year, I thought this segment will be super good. Electric car segment on today. Yeah, last year, I thought it will be amazing. But as days progressed by, there is no garment subsidy which is really announced on the, on the, on the electric cars which can bring down the price of the electric cars. So last year, I thought government will announce a subsidy, 
So I made sure by management discretion, I selected the segment as reported. Current year Corona crisis came in already fiscal deficit has become so big. So I don't expect the uh, government to allow any subsidy on electrical vehicles. It is no longer of that continued importance. But since you reported in the last year due to mini management discretion, you will continue to report it even in current year. These are the only two exceptions where a segment which was not satisfying the materiality test will also be reported under India's 108. Management discretion. A segment can be identified as reportable at the discretion of the management. Though it does not meet the materiality test if the management believes that the segment is of continuing importance of for the future. Segments identified as reportable in the previous financial year at the discretion of the management, such this segment should continue to be reported in the current year, even if the management does not believe that the segment is of continued importance. It is no longer of that importance, but I will still identify it as a reportable segment because you reported it last year due to management discretion. Last year it was reported due to materiality test. This year it is not meeting materiality test. I don't have to report it. Clear? Last year it was reported due to discretion of management. Current year I will have to compulsory report it even though management does not apply the same discretion in current year. Clear? Aggregation of segment. Two or more segments which are not satisfying the materiality test can be aggregated and reported if they are economically similar or major aggregation criteria is satisfied. Two or more segments, they are small segments. They were not considered as reportable because they did not satisfy materiality test. But if they are economically similar in nature and if they meet the aggregation criteria, they are eligible to be combined and be reported as one single segment. What is this aggregation criteria? Aggregation criteria means if the products if the products and services which are dealt by those segments are similar, they have a similar production process, they have a similar distribution cycle, they have a similar uh, class of customers. In such cases, two or more segments, if they have similar uh, uh, goods and services, similar class of customers, similar production process or similar distribution cycle, they can be combined and reported if they don't individually meet the materiality test. Lastly, we come to the last test under India's 109 to identify reportable segments called as overall test. What is an overall test? Overall test means the total segment revenue from segments identified as reportable. The total segment revenue from segments identified as reportable either as per materiality test or as per management discretion or management discretion of the previous year or by aggregation of segments out of the segments identified as reportable if the total segment revenue from external customers that means I am particularly excluding inter-segment revenue if it should be at least 75% of enterprise revenue. If it is less than 75% of the enterprise revenue then you can include more segments you can identify more segments as reportable even though those segments did not satisfy materiality test. So that means what? A segment did not identify, uh, was not satisfying materiality test. But out of the segments identified as reportable, if revenue from external customers is not 70, is less than 75% of the total enterprise revenue, then you can include even those segments which did not satisfy materiality test as reportable segments to meet the overall test. So how many ways? One materiality test, two aggregation of segments, three management discretion, four management discretion of previous year, five overall test. In these five ways I can identify segments as reportable. Sir why did you apply materiality? I applied materiality because sometimes probably the management information which is circulated internally might be too vast, might be too elaborate. Such elaborate information I don't need 
that uh, the user of financial statement says why so much of information give material data that is sufficient because i can't lead lengthy reports fine sir so are you telling me that out of all the operating segments in the enterprise you will report only a few with satisfied materiality or as per discretion of the management or as per uh, overall test that means are you trying to restrict the number of segments to be reported under india 108 no, no there is no restriction on the number of segments to be reported as per india 108 however if your total reportable segments exceed 10 more than 10 there then the management should assess reasonability of information presented he is only asking you to assess he never asked you to limit it he is not saying 10 is the maximum limit he is saying there is no limit but if it exceeds 10 the management should assess whether it is reasonable to report so many segments or not clear yes guys now if i draw your attention to this reportable segments then under a 17 there was one single paragraph which defeated the entire purpose of a 17 where what he said in that paragraph as of a 17 was that if an enterprise has only one business segment and only one geographical segment if you cannot identify various segments in an enterprise that means the segment the enterprise has only one business segment and one geographical segment that segment information is not necessary to be reported it defeated the purpose of the entire standard itself because many enterprises by taking this exemption have continued to give a statement saying that the enterprise has only one segment one business segment and one geographical segment therefore segment information need not be reported such paragraph is not available under India's 108. Therefore, you cannot take the shield of that of that particular notification or such paragraph earlier, which was there, saying that I have only one geographical segment and one business segment. Segment information is no longer to be reported. That paragraph is missing in India's 108. Therefore, higher emphasis on the paragraph because it will make sure that the companies will by force be required to present segment information under india 108 clear now since we have discussed all this what is the fundamental points concept the standard particularly deals with disclosure i have identified certain segments as reportable then what are the disclosures required to be presented for such the uh, for such segments i'll have to give general information what is the general information what is the segment dealing with what is the geographical location of that segment? What is the class of customers in that segment? What goods and products are being served in that seg segment? Segment information. What is the segment revenue? What are the expenses in that segment? What is the tax on that segment? Right? What is the finance cost in that segment? What is the net resulting profit or loss in the segment? What are the segment assets which are attributable to it? What are segment liabilities attributable to it? This is segment specific information provided. Finally, I will give a reconciliation. What does the reconciliation mean? Ultimately, sum of all segments is equal to PN. Segment revenue from external customer add everything should be equal to the total revenue, enterprise revenue in PN. But only few are identified as reportable. So let's say A, B, C, D, four reportable segments, few segments not identified as reportable. So what do I do? Segment revenue from external customer, A plus B plus C plus D plus total of segments are not identified as reportable is equal to total enterprise revenue. Segment expenses, salaries attributable to segment A plus B plus C plus D plus salaries of those segments which are not identified as reportable is equal to total salary in PN. Like this, you will have to present segment information reconciliation for every item in your PNL and your segment information. And that will bring us to the end of discussion under India's 108.